Do daytime running lights actually improve bicycle safety? Should they be flashing or steady? We'll investigate in this video. As much as we don't like to think about it, cycling is considerably more dangerous than driving. When evaluated per kilometer traveled, the risk of serious injury and death while cycling is about 10 times higher than while riding in a car. On average, about half of cycling incidents are single bicycle crashes, usually caused by loss of control, poor road conditions, or mechanical failure. The other half are multi-party incidents, those involving pedestrians, other cyclists, and more importantly, motor vehicles. Let's review some of the more common motor vehicle related incidents. The most severe of these collisions occur when motorists overtake cyclists from behind. The most common site for car bike crashes is at intersections, and these include motorists not yielding to cyclists at stop signs or during left turns and right turns. In most of these crashes, motorists indicated they didn't see the cyclists in time. Does being more noticeable actually make a difference? Could daytime running lights be the answer? To find out, researchers in Denmark selected 4,000 volunteer riders, half of whom were given front and rear permanent running lights, while the other half, acting as the control group, were to ride without them. The running lights were attached to the front and rear forks. Powered by magnets, they generated a small flash, less than 10 lumens, as the wheels rotated. This also meant they stopped flashing when the bicycle stopped moving. At the end of the 12-month test period, a 47% reduction in multi-party crashes was recorded by the group using daytime running lights, despite the relative low intensity of the flashes and issues related to immobile cyclists. This clearly demonstrates the benefit of such devices. Should running lights be flashing or steady? Laws and regulations vary from country to country or even between areas in a country. Flashing lights are illegal in Germany, for example. Well, some places, like the United Kingdom, regulate the flashing rate. You'll have to check specifics if you're planning to cycle in other countries. When legal, flashing lights do have definite advantages. Depending on frequency and duration, flashes can be perceived as being brighter than a steady light of identical intensity, thus making the cyclist more visible. It also extends battery life because flashing uses much less power than a steady beam. The Broca-Sulzer effect is a phenomenon where a flash duration between 50 and 100 milliseconds is perceived by the human brain as being significantly brighter than it really is. We started using a rear daytime visible light during our 2019 East Coast Greenway tour. Florida having the highest incidence of cyclist crashes per population in the United States, we felt it wise, in addition to wearing our reflective vests. We opted for the Braunträger Flare R, especially designed as a daytime running light. This model has now been replaced by the more powerful Flare RT, which is also smaller and lighter. The flashing pattern uses 50 and 100 millisecond bursts to optimize human perception. It also uses a reflector and lens to concentrate the available light into a narrower and more powerful beam. Researchers at Clemson University in South Carolina use the Bontrager RT light to study the minimum distance required by motorists to identify a cyclist on the side of the road. Riders with flashing lights were identified 85 meters earlier, increasing motorist reaction time by about 5 seconds. During our last four years using the flare, we particularly appreciated its long battery life and its distinctive and powerful flashing pattern. Note that it's important to orient the lens properly during installation, as its light beam is relatively narrow and a slight misalignment will reduce its visibility over a longer distance. Those using the Brompton rear rack to carry high loads may need an alternate mounting setup as a seat post view may be obstructed. At maximum daytime setting, the latest RT provides 90 lumen flashes for 6 hours. While touring, we ran them constantly and recharged them daily using the provided micro USB cable and never ran out of power while riding. The RT is very light at 40 grams and is extremely waterproof, rated IPX7. We recently decided to use a front daytime visible light as well. Available space on the Brompton handlebar is limited, especially on our pre-2017 M bars. The mounting straps of our handlebar bag further restrict the situation. Gilbert solved the problem by installing a Raveman FR160 to a stem Garmin adapter mount. This light has its own adapter mount on its top surface, therefore letting us use both the Garmin GPS and the light without taking up additional space. Note that a low-cost conversion kit is available for those who favor Wahoo cycle computers. The FR160 has a wide angle of view and six different light modes, three fixed and three flashing. 
The strongest flash, mainly designed for daytime, providing 160 lumens for up to five hours on a single charge. Its 180 degree wide angle lens provides good side visibility, although it somewhat dilutes the overall illumination. The lack of contrast is particularly noticeable on bright sunny days. Designed to be seen rather than to see by, its 50 lumens in high steady mode might be insufficient as a main source of light for night riding, but could serve in an emergency. The 55 gram device is waterproof at IPX6 and comes with a USB-C charging cable. Its low profile and dual Garmin mount make it a good solution when cockpit space is limited. Daytime running lights have been standard on motorcycles and cars for many years. Although not mandatory for cyclists, they have been proven to reduce the risk of multi-party crashes by almost 50%. Using them in a high-risk environment is probably one of the best low-cost, high-return investments we can make next to wearing a high-visibility vest. For maximum visibility in bright daylight, we would suggest 100 lumens or more, but as demonstrated in the scientific studies, even a relatively small flashing light can make a big difference. Are you using a daytime visible light? Which model have you selected? Let us know in the comments. We're Pam and Gilbert of Two Bikes for Adventure.